Hi everyone, and welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up your client environment for SharePoint development. It's always good to understand how development works, right? Especially in the current era of DevSecOps. So, without further ado, let's start off with how you get your client set up from scratch. So first, what we want to do is to go to the uh, Microsoft SharePoint docu uh, development documentation, right? So it's aka.ms slash spfx, right? It's important to follow the steps in the documents, right? Uh, as the versions of the development tools, the applications, plugins, and uh, you know, the rest of the uh, versions of the tools keeps changing. So it's always good to look through the documentation to see what you need to take note of, right? So first, let's go to getting started. Right? And then if you have not set up your Microsoft 365 tenant, right, you can always uh, sign up for a M365 developer account for free and then set up a tenant for testing. Next, what we're going to do is have a client, right? So for me, I have a window, 10 clients set up for this development effort. So once that's done, right, uh, we want to set up the development environment. Okay, uh, you can use Mac, Windows or Linux for your uh, coding environment. However, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do it in a Windows 10 uh, virtual machine. Right, so you can, as you can see, the first step you really need to do is set up your Microsoft 365 tenant. And uh, next, we would like to install the Node.js. Okay, it's important to take note of the version that is supported as of uh, this video. Although in the documentation version is 1.10, you will notice that uh, as of the video that I've done in December or January 2021, uh, the version has changed, right? In this video, I believe the LTS uh, version of Node.js is version 10. As you can see in the documentation, it is version 14. So it's important to take note, you know, of all these things as things changes, right? You want to select the long-term support the LTS release so that, you know, it is stays relevant and supported for a longer period of time. Okay, uh, so what you want to do is to go to Node.js. And then as you can see, uh, the current version is 16.13. Uh, for, rec for for most users and uh, latest feature is 17. So we're going to follow the documentation and look for version 14, right? And then you can see that the end of life support is 2023. So it's good for a couple of years. Unfortunately, with today's application development, uh, the timelines get shortened very, very quickly. So we're going to go to version 14. And then I'm going to choose the uh, 64-bit MSSI MSI um, file, right? Since in a window environment is pretty straightforward, you're using we are using MSSI uh, installer. So once that's done, what you're gonna do is hop over to my virtual machine. Okay, as you can see, this is a fresh install so that we can start uh, fresh. Okay, I'm going to do that download in this uh, machine here. Let's open up our H. Download. Okay, as you can see, the installer is done. Okay, let's click next. Accept the terms, right? You can see where the file is stored. We're not going to change any of the config. Um, we'll not be using um, Choco for this uh, packaging. We're going to click next and click install. To allow, 
And then that's the installation for Node.js. Okay, we're finished. Okay, and then what we want to do is to use a console, right? Um, you can use command prompt, you can use a PowerShell, right? So we're going to use PowerShell for this tutorial. Um, I usually like to run as administrator to make it easier. And then, okay, so what we'll do is we'll follow the documentation as close as possible and fix anything along the way. So what we want to see is the Node.js version. Okay, we can do a node minus v. Okay, we can see that we are we have installed the version 14.18.2. Okay. So you can see that you know they support anything greater than version 14.15.0 and as of this tutorial the SharePoint version is 1.13.1. Okay, next, uh, we're going to install a code editor. Uh, you know, since we're on the Windows platform, we can use the Visual Studio code editor, right? Um, why uh, prompting for Mac? Okay, we need uh, getting for the Windows. If you're a Mac user, you can use Atom. You can use any of the code editor that you are comfortable with. So let's save the file. And do take note. We are building this for SharePoint Online, right? So if you are doing SharePoint on-prem uh, development and deployment, you need to see the uh, on-prem section. Okay. So it's, let's see. Once it's downloaded, is it downloading? It doesn't seem to be downloading. Okay. Let's go back again to... I've downloaded on another machine. Okay, so let's download this again. Okay, it's downloading. Okay. You can install all three components to using a single line command. Uh, I would not recommend it for beginners as when you hit into problem it's harder to troubleshoot right so we're gonna i'm gonna show you how to install all the respective component individually all right okay let's install node.js sorry uh vs code visual studio code accept the term Okay, we keep the default, right? Uh, we want to allow, you know, smart opening and then create an icon. Okay, let's do install. Finish. And you can see that the uh, code editor is, Visual Studio Code Editor is installed. Okay, so next let's install the respective uh, component so gulp is a javascript based task runner so this is needed All right so what we're going to do is to do npm install so we can just copy and paste oops sorry i need to copy this and then let's paste this okay You see a lot of warnings and uh, you know uh, vulnerabilities are uh, you know concern here, right? So as for this tutorial, we're not going to fix uh, all this as it takes a lot of time, right, to fix those. And uh, you know when you fix some of that, you might break other things. So according to the videos from uh, the website, right, uh, 
for a dev environment, it's not such a big concern, right? If you are doing in production, then it's a whole different story altogether. So do take note of that. I'll fast forward this and we'll go to the next section shortly. Okay, we're done. So you can see that version 2.3.0 is installed. Let's just make sure that it is the right version. Oops. Okay. So if you are new like me, you can see that the we have not allowed script to be run on the PowerShell. So we're going to find a way to fix this. As mine is a brand new environment, so well, you, get, you hit into this. If you have been doing development work on a machine, then you shouldn't face a problem. For, but let's see what is the... Uh, policy right so currently you can see all my policies are there are no policies execution policy defined for my users or machine so what we're going to do is to allow right since i have run my powershell as administrator i'll be able to do this what you want what you want to do is to set the execution policies as remote sign for this current user right so with that uh policy change do you want to change the policy yes to all okay so now that's done now let's try and run our got minus minus version as you can see right the version is 2.3.0 okay great now let's do the next uh we're going to install yeoman right yeoman is a client-side development tool right uh using yeoman generator for the web part that we will be doing probably in another video. So what we're going to do is to install Yeoman, npm install yo minus global. Let's make the font a little bit bigger so we can see. Okay, it looks like we are done. Everything looks all right. Okay, next we're gonna do the install the Yeoman SharePoint generator, right? Take a while. I'll fast forward that as well. those that are looking at you know development work for a longer time you can always check out more on the project itself and uh, understand more Okay, assume that you have a browser already in place. So I've installed uh, Internet Explorer and Firefox on the machine. You can use any of the browser later. Now, trusting of a cell sign developer certificate is important for HTTPS, but um, you know we will not execute this command after this. Um, as I do not have a project yet, so uh, we can run this uh, command after we set up a project. There are other tools that are helpful and uh, you can install them as part of your uh, development workstation. Uh, so we've pretty much done the SPFX uh, setup for the client side and uh, for the next video, we'll look into building the client side web part right so that you can build and upload to your sharepoint online after that
Okay, there are a few commands that are useful for troubleshooting and understanding. You can look at that later. So that's pretty much all for this short tutorial. We'll look at the web part in the next uh, video after we install the generator. Okay, you can see that we've completed the installation of the generator. Um, you know, ignore the warning for now. So we're good to go. Uh, we've set up the client machine, uh, the client side development machine for SharePoint development. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for my next video. Stay safe and take care.